Hi everyone, and welcome to this month's Houston Theater Beat. I'm your host, John Lazo, and this month's show is packed full of some of the Bayou City's top talent, and I know you're going to enjoy it. Did you ever wonder how a playwright gets a new play published and presented to you, the audience? Well, this, in this month's backstage segment, we'll be talking to Gene Cato, the owner of the licensing and publishing company Next Stage Press, who will take us behind the scenes to the reading of a brand new play, which could be coming soon to a theater near you. In our In Performance segment, the very lovely and talented Monica Lynn Pasley will treat us to a beautiful musical number from the Broadway smash Beauty and the Beast. And, of course, you could always rely on Houston Theater Beat to help you plan your theater-going calendar with our regular segment, The Marquee. And even though that lovable Mud Harley has been hanging out at the beach this summer a lot, we did manage to corral him to come in and provide us with another must-see show for Harley's Hot Ticket. So let's get started. <laughs> I'm here at the, a reading for a brand new play called A Doll House, which is a brand new take on the Ibsen classic. In a few minutes, we're going to be talking to Gene Cato, who is the owner of Next Stage Press, who's going to tell us a little bit about what a licensing and publishing company does and how playwrights get their plays to the public. But before we get to that interview, I wanted you to meet some of the folks who are actually going to be participating in the reading today, the actors who are joining us here. And we're going to start with Amanda Baird. Amanda, shameless plugs all around. <laughs> what is it that you have going on? Uh, currently, uh, Festival Originals at Theater Southwest, which opens the last week of, week at, uh, excuse me, of July. And runs for two weekends, and then uh, Awesome America with um, Ohana Theater Company. Great. And over here we have Jonathan Gonzalez. Jonathan, what's going on with you? Hi. Um, well, I'm the Assistant Director of Education at Main Street Theater, so right now we're working on Houston's largest performing arts summer camp, and our goal is to get to a thousand kids this summer. We have about 988 as of now. So that's pretty much where I am right now. We have not officially announced our season at Main Street Theater, but it should be announced soon, within the next week or so, hopefully. We'll see. And once it's announced, um, I will probably be working on something there, but not sure yet. So just uh, check out Main Street Theater at uh, MainStreetTheater.com, and that's theater with an E-R, and find out what we're doing. we got a lot going on. And next we have Elizabeth marshall Bot. Hi, um, I have coming up a show with Ron Jones's uh, theater company celebration, the Bebo Brinker Chronicles, and I'm playing Bebo Brinker. I'm excited about that. That'll be sometime in the fall. And I'm excited to be here today as part of this reading. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elaine Reynolds is over here. She's joining us today. Elaine, what's coming up with you? Hi, I actually just finished a show at a dinner theater in Clear Lake at uh, Franca's Real Italian Restaurant. And I'm taking a little bit of a break um, until I start a production of Death of a Salesman, um, opening November, December, where I'll be playing uh, the Linda character. Great. Here we have Buzz Belmont, who's joining us. I'm Buzz Belmont. Most people know me as a theater critic, but don't realize that have, I have an extensive background in acting. So it's with great joy that I get to join this circle as an actor and not as a theater critic. So you guys don't need to worry about anything. I'm not going to write anything bad or, or even good about you. No, I've already written some good things about you guys. But I'm just busy uh, reviewing the heck out of theater in this city. I think I cover more theater than anybody. I have a blog on cron.com, and you can get to it just by Googling my name, B-U-Z-Z-B-E-L-L-M-O-N-T. I reviewed Black Coffee at the Alley last weekend. Thursday night I saw The Lion King and came out with my review yesterday. Last night I saw Tamari Cooper's Doomsday Review at Catastrophic Theater, which is unbelievable, great fun, hilarious. And tonight I'm going to Avenue Q at Country Playhouse. It's the regional, it's sort of the Houston theater premiere of Avenue Q, so I'm looking forward to that. Tomorrow night, I go to Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson at Generations Theater at Hammond Hall on the Rice Campus. So I'm really looking forward to those shows, and more importantly, this reading, which uh, reconnects me to my roots as an actor, which is always great to get back to. 
Thanks. Thank you, Buzz. And last but not least, we have Brian Maynard over here. Hi, I'm Brian Maynard. Um, my next production will be with the Ohana Theater Awesome America. That will be running the uh, last weekend of September, the first weekend of October. And then I'll be sliding from that straight into uh, Evil Dead the Musical at the Country Playhouse. Great, thank you, you. thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and let the actors get busy with the reading. And while they're focusing on that, Hang on, because right now we're going to be talking to the owner of Next Stage Press, Gene Cato, about uh, everything involved in the process that you're seeing now. Um, tell us a little bit, bit about Next Stage Press. When did you establish it? Uh, what does it do? Well, ne uh, Next Stage Press was established in May of 2009. Um, I, most of the playwrights that are out there know that uh, usually in order to get a play, published or you know have a successful type of run with multiple productions most of the theaters across the United States kind of look to New York City and shows that have been done either on Broadway or off Broadway sometimes off off Broadway but the plays that are kind of out here in the hinterlands as we would call them I, I guess hinterlands is outside New York City okay. and, Te know, Texas counts as the hinterland Texas right. counts as okay. the hinterlands okay. um, uh, basically, most of the plays that you see have had either New York City runs or maybe Chicago or Seattle, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of wonderful plays that are out here in the United States that we would never, ever see uh, just because they don't have access to the markets in New York. So in 2009, I decided to open up a play publishing company specifically trying to target those plays that were written by writers across the United States that um, may not have a platform in order to get their plays out there just for people to see and buy and possibly boost. Great. Uh, the, the reading today, that will actually be an influence on whether Next Stage Press decides whether to publish the play or not? Yeah, uh, I mean, and it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not the deciding factor, but the reason why I like to do these is because, uh, you know, the big question comes up, you know, actually, I've, I've had some friends of mine that were readers for uh, publishing houses or our screenplay readers out in um, Los Angeles. And what I've heard over and over and over again is, you know, whether or not the play gets accepted depends largely on the person that's reading it. If they want to, you know, send it on for a second round or something, well, what happens if, say, you write a play that is just not my cup of tea and I happen to be the person that's reading it? it can actually just stop dead at that point. Sure. So what I like to do is, uh, Next Stage Press, we, we try to kind of, as, as closely as we can without the, uh, you know, putting it into a full-blown production, is have different actors read each one of the parts before you can see kind of how different actors might interpret the material, uh, see how characters will play off of one another, and kind of give, just give different voices to it. Because when you're sitting in a, in a chair, reading it, you may imagine all of this stuff, but it's kind of your own voice that's reading all of the different characters, and here you, it makes it just a little bit more lively and interesting. Sure. And um, also, Next Stage Press actually offers to the public um, the scripts. I mean, you're also, in addition to doing the publishing, right. you also sell the scripts to the public. To right. The, so, to the public. Yes. So, if I, just as a general reader, mm -hmm. want to uh, just read uh, some new plays just right. for my own edification, then I can actually go to the Next Stage website and look at your catalog and do that. How, how does that work? The, well, the, there's, there's a new thing that stuff. started in the past couple of, I, actually, uh, there's another play publishing company called Play Scripts that started this, and, and we kind of adopted the mold that they have as well. You can go onto our website, and we're putting the first act of every play that we license on the website to where you can read it where you don't have to, um, it'll download to your computer, you can't email it or print it out, but you can read the first act just to see whether or not you like it or not. That way you don't have to spend the money on the play for something that you may not like. Um, and then it gives people an opportunity, now you can't, you can't see how the play ends. I mean, right. you gotta buy the play in order to see how it ends. It's sort of like a free sample in the grocery store. Exactly, gotcha. that's exactly what it is. And um, then uh, we've had people that have read, read the first act and they were interested enough in the rest of the play and um, decided to order the rest of the play and, actually, and and then, you know, a couple of productions came out of that from wow. Love. Wow, that's incredible. So, um, the next time Houston Theater Beat audience, the next time you see what you think is 
a great new play. Hopefully this gave you some background on how that whole process actually starts, how it comes about, and how playwrights go about getting their new ideas to a publishing company such as Next Stage Press. It's very interesting. Also, real quick, give the Houston Theatre Beat audience the website address for Next Stage so that they can go and look at your catalog. Sure, sure, come see it. It, it is www.nextstagepress.net not com, www.nextstagepress.net and um, the, the full catalog is up there and uh, you'll see a section that says read a sample if you want to and come online and read a play, read half of a play, see if you like it. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well I'd like to thank my guest Gene Cato today of Next Stage Press for being with us in the backstage segment on Houston Theatre Beat for this month and Houston Theatre Beat viewers if you would stay tuned because coming right up we have our regular bulletin board that will let you know some great shows that are going on coming up in the Houston area and that is The Marquee. Join Clear Creek Community Theatre as they present the popular musical Kiss Me Kate. The story involves the production of a musical version of William Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew and an on and off stage romance between Fred Graham and his leading lady. Kiss Me Kate runs from September 7th through September 23rd at Clear Creek Community Theatre. Clear Creek is conveniently located directly across from Space Center on NASA Parkway. Pasadena Little Theatre presents Gypsy. Gypsy is a classic American musical based on the story of an aggressive stage mother, Rose, and her daughters, June and Louise, in their trip across the United States during the 1920s, when vaudeville was dying and burlesque was born. Rose is relentless in trying to help her daughters gain stardom, but those chances fade as the girls grow up and vaudeville shows disappear. It is finally Louise who shoots into fame by becoming something different a ladylike stripper in a burlesque show, becoming Gypsy Rose Lee. You can catch Gypsy from August 24th through September 16th at Pasadena Little Theater. Don't miss You're in Town, coming up at Baytown Little Theater. Winner of three Tonys and two Obies, You're in Town is a tale of love, greed, and revolution. The show is set in a town where water has become so scarce that private toilets are unthinkable and unavailable. Drawing from West Side Story, Chicago, and Les Miserables among others, the show irreverently pays witty homage to the great American musical theater tradition. You're in Town is running August 3rd through August 19th at Baytown Little Theater. Remember, all show dates and times are subject to change, so check with the theater box offices and websites for the latest information. We'll see you at the show. in performance segment, I'm delighted to welcome Monica Lynn Pasley to Houston Theatre Beat. Monica is a familiar face to audiences all over the Houston um, theatre scene. Uh, she appears both in straight plays, regular dramas and comedies, but she's better known for her appearances in musical. She is one of the great uh, talents of musical theater here in Houston and one of my personal favorite voices in Houston musical theater. And Monica, I'm so glad you could be with us today. Thank you for on, having me. On Houston Theater Beat. It's delighted, well, we're delighted to have you. Tell us a little bit about, in musical theater, tell us how you got your start specifically in musical theater, maybe a little bit about your training and your background. Okay. Um, well, I actually started singing probably before I could talk, and <laughs> that's what my mother likes to say anyway. And uh, I got into HSPVA, the High School Performing and Visual Arts, as a freshman and completed through my senior year, and I was in the vocal music department. Um, so I didn't really do any of the musicals until my senior year, and I kind of got the bug and went off to college for a semester, came back and said, you know what, I've got to start performing again. 
and so I went and I did the co-op auditions and did two touring shows and then ended up with Masquerade Theater um, right away pretty much into the resident company and uh, was with them for almost four years and since then I've just kind of been floating around Houston and trying out all the different theaters that I can find. Fantastic. You mentioned the co-op auditions. The Houston Theater Beat audience may not be familiar with what those are. Those are those are a really important set of auditions for all of the actors in the Houston community. Um, tell us a little about the co-op auditions. What does that involve? Uh, what you have is pretty much all these directors and casting people from all the different theaters in Houston, um, as well as some people who come in to do touring shows outside of Houston. Uh, you're given a couple of minutes, I believe it's two or three, it varies on what you're doing. You can do uh, two monologues and a song if you choose to do a song, or you can do one monologue that showcases two different styles, be, be it you know, serious and comedy. Um, you can just you can mix it up a little bit, make it easy for them to see your dynamic, because um, you want to show them as much as you can and then throw that song in there. I know sometimes I like to do the scene that goes right into the song or the song that comes into the scene afterwards. So that way everyone gets to see you all at one time and then throughout the year people will call you and ask you to come in and maybe do a second audition since that counts as your first one for a lot of people or they may just cast you directly from that throughout the season. Wow. You are a very busy lady right now if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Tell us about the shows that you have that, are, that you're working on right now. Uh, right now I am working on Mr. Marmalade at Country Playhouse in the Black Box. We will open that the second weekend of August. Um, I am playing Lucy, who is a four-year-old, and um, it's a very twisted play, but it is so good. And no music, so <laughs> not my norm, but it's fun. And then the other really big project that I'm working on right now is actually my first solo cabaret. Um, it's called Love and Other Oddities, and it's going to be at Ovations um, July 20th and 21st, so uh, Friday and Saturday night. And um, it's going to be really neat. We've got two sets going. The first set is going to be a lot of your standards and musical theater. And then the second set is going to be more country and a few pop songs and some random other surprises thrown in. So it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty neat little deal. Um, two nights only. So. Right. Oh, two nights only. Yeah. So Houston Theater Beat viewers, make sure you get your tickets right away for uh, Monica's Cabaret over at o Ovations. Um, as so, uh, later on in the, the segment, we will have information for you on how you can get tickets at both venues to see Monica, both as an actress and as a musical theater actress, and we'll have that information coming up. But first, we have a real treat. Monica is going to do a song for us. And Monica, tell us what you're going to be singing today. Uh, I am actually going to be singing a song um, from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Belle sings this song, it's home, and that's actually one of my dream roles. So. Great. I know our Houston Theater Beat audience, our audience are great uh, Beauty and the Beast fans as well, so we're looking forward to hearing that. So stay tuned, because now we're going to present Monica Lynn Pasley singing Home from Beauty and the Beast.
Monica Lynn Hasley, everybody singing Home from Beauty and the Beast. Absolutely lovely. Thank, thank you. you. So, thank you so much. And one more time for the Houston Theater Beat audience, let's recap the shows that you're in, starting with Mr. Marmalade at Country Playhouse. When does that open? It opens Friday, August 10th, and runs through the 25th. Great. And of course, uh, for Country Playhouse uh, tickets, you can go to the Country Playhouse website. That's www countryplayhouse.org to get tickets for Mr. Marmalade featuring Monica and for the cabaret at Ovations when is that running? Uh, it is running for two nights Friday and Saturday July 20th and 21st um, and you can get tickets for that on my website which is www.monicalynnpasley.com uh, they're $15 on the website and $20 at the door. Great. So don't forget to get tickets to see Monica in her cabaret at Ovations. You're going to go to www.monicalynnpasley.com and make sure you get tickets to see Monica singing in her cabaret at Ovations, which I'm sure is going to be a very, very special evenings. Oh, yes. And a lot of fun and very entertaining. So once again, our guest Monica Lynn Pasley, everybody, thank you for being on Houston Theater Beat. And stay tuned because we'll be coming right back with a brand new segment of Harley's Hot Ticket. Well, it took a long leash, but we finally managed to drag Harley off the beach long enough to hunt down this month's hot ticket. And he came back with a selection that is both unique and fascinating. Black Lab Theater joins other companies throughout the Houston area, including Big Head Productions and Catastrophic Theater, just to name two, in presenting a play dealing with, what else for 2012, the end of the world. In this case, the play is Boom by Peter Sen Nochtrieb. A grad student's online personal ad lures a mysterious journalism student to his subterranean research lab under the pretense of an evening of no-strings-attached sex. But when a major global catastrophic event strikes the planet, their date takes on evolutionary significance and the fate of humanity hangs in the balance. Boom is an epic and intimate comedy that spans billions of years and explores the influences of fate versus randomness in the course of one's life and life as we know it on the planet. According to the New York Times, quote, Mr. Nocturne has a gift for darkly funny dialogue and an appealing way of approaching big themes sideways. As was the case with Black Lab's recent production, The Compelling Our House, this show will prove to be a certain must-see.
Boom runs September 14th through September the 29th. For more information on Boom and on Black Lab Theater, make sure you visit the Black Lab website at www.blacklabtheater.com. Well, that's all for this month's Houston Theater Beat. I'm your host, John Lazo, and until next month, I'll see you at the show.